Okay, we are at uh, section 7.3. Um, this is on trigonometric integrals. Um, this chapter, we're just working our way through um, more difficult styles of integrals. In section 1, we um, just reviewed a bunch of old styles, um, but some of them were pretty tough. In section 2, we did integration by parts, and these are all going to be integrals involving trig functions. Um, sorry, I'm having some sound issues. So um, what I'm going to have to do today is um, talk into the mic at my computer, pause it, and run up right on the smart board, and unpause it back and forth. So just bear with me. Um, if you were looking for this video earlier, I apologize for not having it up. Um, but like I said, my, my technical problems are um, about more than I can deal with. So here we go. Um, first category of trig integrals is ones that involve sines and cosines. Um, and these are the three rules that you'd find in your textbook um, summed up about as short as I can make them. Uh, this first one, um, cosine cubed times sine to the fourth, falls under this category um, where cosine is odd and positive. And if that's the case, the rule is save a cosine. And I'll show you what that means next. Um, I'm going to pause right and I'll be right back. And I'm back. So here's what I mean by uh, uh, save a cosine. I had cosine to the third power. I saved one, as in I broke that into cosine times cosine squared. Just divided that cubed into a first power and a second power. And this is the one cosine that was saved. And I'll show you why it was saved in just a minute. Um, the other two cosines I need to convert into sines. The trig identity sine squared plus co cosine squared equals 1 can be used to change um, even multiples of cosine into sines by replacing cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. And then if I distribute the sine to the fourth to both of those terms, I get sine to the fourth minus sine to the sixth. And this cosine was saved all along. Okay, because cosine was odd to start with, I'm left with one loner and an even amount, which I can transform over into cosines. Okay, so I'm going to pause and write a little bit more. Okay, so we were um, right here where we had the loner cosine, and we had changed all the other cosines into sines. Okay, so now if you distribute the cosine through to both of those parts, I can break this into two separate integrals. Um, sine to the fourth times cosine and sine to the sixth times cosine. So here's why you saved that one extra loner cosine. Um, you can have sine to the anything as long as you have the cosine that goes with it, okay? Because this is going to be a u substitution where u is equal to sine. As long as that du is there, that cosine is there, um, then you can integrate sine to whatever. Sine to the 100th would be sine to the 101 over 101. Sine to the 80th would be sine to the 81 over 81. You get the point. This, this 4 right here could be anything as long as cosine is there. That's why that cosine got saved. So since that's there, the integral is sine to the fourth, sine to the fifth over five. And this one over here, sine to the sixth, its integral is sine to the seventh over seven. Okay, with this cosine not here, you cannot integrate sine to the sixth. And with this one here, you cannot integrate sine to the fourth. But as long as you've saved it, then you have it there to serve as du. Um, then it just disappears, reverse chain rule. And um, here's your final answer. Okay, so I'm going to pause, write a little more, be right back. Okay, so this is another example. If you re recall the three situations from the top of the page, if both are even or only one of them is there and um, it's even, we're going to have to use trig identity. So here's an example where um, I have sine to the fourth of two theta. Um, it would be nice if I had a cosine there um, to serve as du, and I could just go sine to the fifth over five, um, but that's not going to happen because um, there's no cosine there. Um, and because this is even, I can't just peel off one of those. I'd be left with three sines, and I can't change three sines into cosines. Um, so this is why this is a different situation. So this one is even. Um, I'm going to have to use repeated trig identities, and here's the main one, sine squared of u. Um, if you recall from your trig days, the sine squared of u is equal to 1 minus the cosine of 2u over 2. 
So whatever that argument is, in our case it's 2 theta here and here, um, is going to get doubled. So my first step is to break my sine to the fourth into two sine squareds, and then I use this trig identity twice. Um, sine squared of 2 theta is 1 minus the cosine of 4 theta over 2. Make sure you understand why that's a 4. Because whatever my argument is, 2 theta in this case, needs to get doubled due to the identity. So I end up with um, two separate um, trig identities that are multiplied together. So this 2 and this 2 together can come outside the integral and form a 1 fourth. And then what I'm left with is two binomials, one minus the cosine of four theta twice. And those two things need to be multiplied together, which you probably would use what you call FOIL to multiply those two together. One times one is one. Uh, and then the O and the I are negative cosine of four theta, negative cosine of four theta. So together those are negative two cosine of four theta. And then negative cosine four theta times itself is positive cosine squared of four theta. So what happens there is, again, I create a cosine squared. It's like my sine squared from, a, from above, but um, it's uh, cosine squared. And the only difference in that identity is a plus sign instead of a minus sign. So if I use that identity for cosine squared of 4 theta, I get 1 plus cosine of 8 theta over 2. And um, what, these, what these identities are doing for us is getting rid of squares that we can't deal with. Um, so I got rid of my sine squares, and in the process, I created a cosine squared. I had to use an identity again to get rid of the cosine squared. So this is the kind of integral where you just have to keep on trying something until you get it broken down into something you can work with. All right, so here's where we stand right now. I'm going to go finish this, and uh, then I will be back to explain. Okay, so here's the rest of this beauty of a problem. We, um, we had cosine squared, changed it to 1 plus cosine 8 theta over 2 and then we can get to the integrating. Okay, so um, just to uh, kind of combine, combine like terms, I changed one plus cosine eight theta over two to one half plus a half cosine eight theta. And I took this half and combined it with this one to make it three halves. So I ended up with three terms um, inside my integral. So I'm gonna integrate each one of those terms separately. Okay, um, now three halves integrates to three halves theta. No big deal there. Um, cosine 4 theta. I can integrate a cosine. The integral of cosine is sine as long as the derivative of this u is present. And the derivative of 4 theta is 4 d theta. So I need to throw a 4 in here and a 4 on the bottom outside to compensate for it. And then once I have that, the 2 fourths becomes a half and the integral of cosine 4 theta is sine 4 theta. Similarly over here, as long as I have an 8 inside, I can integrate the cosine of 8 theta, which would be the sine of 8 theta. But in throwing that 8 on the inside, I need to put a 1 8 on the outside, which combines with a 1 half to give me a 1 16. Okay, so um, after all of the trig work we did, we just need a few constants to make this thing work. And then the last thing I did was distribute this 1 fourth through to each term. And here's your final answer. Okay, so. Uh, not the prettiest, but um, this is what happens when sine or cosine has a power that's even and positive. Um, this is the um, process. So just to review, um, these are the three basic guidelines. Um, we did not do a sine is odd and positive, but that's going to work just like the cosine example did up here. Um, and then if both are even or you just have one, sine or a cosine there and it's even, you're going to have to use trig identities like we did in this example. So let's just call that 7-3 uh, part 1 and um, we will work on these in class and then deal with secants and uh, tangents later. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this one, Young Out.